the more you listen, the more you learn. But listening more is not as easy as it sounds. By building a personal Chinese audio library, you ensure that you always have something suitable to listen to, no matter what situation you're in. Hello and welcome to the Hacking Chinese podcast. In this week's episode, we are going to talk about listening ability in Chinese and how to improve it by listening more. This is something I've talked about on the podcast before, but today we're going to look at a specific aspect of listening more, namely how to make sure that you have suitable things to listen to. And this is more important than most people think. It's not just a matter of having a few podcasts available. It's about having a full range of different types of audio on different levels, so that you always have something to listen to, no matter what other things you might need to do at the same time, what mood you're in, how much energy you have, and so on. Since I have already covered many times why listening is so important, I will not try to convince you of that today. I will just assume that you agree that you want to listen more, and so we will discuss how to do that. If you are new to the podcast, however, I recommend that you check out episode one hundred and eleven, where I talk about why listening matters, and it's also the first episode in a series focusing on listening ability called Beyond Timbodong. So, if you're interested in learning why you don't understand spoken Chinese sometimes and what you can do about it, check out that series. So, in this week's episode, we are going to talk about why and how to build your personal Chinese audio library. And like I said, with such a library, you will always have something suitable to listen to, and this includes fairly easy material if you're tired or you just don't feel like listening to something difficult. But it also includes more interesting content that might be linguistically challenging for you because it's a little bit above your level. Collecting these resources and making sure they are available will enable you to listen much more than if you don't, and that will in turn have very positive effects on your Chinese. Not just listening comprehension, but basically everything else too. Without such a library, you will waste much time and energy trying to find things to listen to, and you will often give up because finding something is too hard, or the things you find are themselves too hard. You will also miss many learning opportunities, not because you didn't want to learn, but because you weren't prepared. So let's build our personal audio libraries together. Before we go into a practical discussion about how to build your Chinese audio library, I think it's in place to talk a little bit about why we can't just listen more. I mean, it is a very simple instruction, but as we shall see, and as anybody who has tried it knows, it is not so easy to put into practice. I think there are two problems that we need to overcome, and they can be briefly summarized as first, finding something suitable to listen to, and then second, getting things done. In this case, this means listening. In this episode, I want to talk mostly about the first problem, i.e., how to make sure you have suitable audio available. But since these two problems are closely intertwined, I think we should start by talking a little bit about getting things done. For most people, getting things done or doing what you think you ought to do is not always easy because humans are not machines, and we can't just program ourselves to listen to Chinese for eight hours a day. Changing habits is difficult, not just because it takes time and effort to establish new patterns of behavior, but also because you might need to deconstruct and get rid of old ones to free up time. This is something I discussed more in an article called "Habit Hacking for Language Learners," and I'll put a link to that in the description, along with links to other things I mention in this episode. For the discussion here, though, I think it's enough to note that changing behavior is not easy. It's also worth noting that while doing something simple a large number of times seems easier than doing something very hard once, both are difficult, just in different ways. Compare climbing a wall with walking a thousand steps, for example. Climbing is hard because every step is hard, which is what most people mean when they say that something is hard. Walking a thousand miles is also hard, but not because each step is hard, but because there are so many steps in total. As I argued in episode one hundred and fifty-five, learning Chinese is difficult more in the sense of walking a thousand miles than climbing a wall. So, in other words, there are many things you need to do a large number of times, but each time in itself does not present much of a difficulty. The difficulty comes in persistence and doing it over and over for years. For more general advice on how to listen more, i.e., on how to take all these steps over and over, you can check out episode fifty-seven. But I will summarize it briefly here. 
In that episode, I brought up seven ideas for a smooth and effortless Chinese listening practice, and they were number one, to get cheap wireless earphones, which can make a very big difference. Then number two, always have audio available. And this is kind of obvious, if you don't have audio available, you can't listen. And if you need to spend time and effort to find the audio, that is time and energy that you could have put into listening instead. Number three, have audio at a suitable level available. So it's not just about having audio or something to listen to, you need to have audio on different levels, as I mentioned in the introduction. This is also something we're going to expand on today. Number four, make Chinese the default option. This means that it should be easier to listen to things in Chinese compared with your native language, and that will enable you to listen much more as well. Number five, commit to activities that involve listening. So this is about doing things where you will be automatically exposed to Chinese, and by, say, signing up for a class of some kind or doing things that are in Chinese, you will get more listening. Number six is a slightly more extreme version where you make Chinese the only option. So if you have audiobooks in several languages, delete everything that isn't in Chinese. Don't listen to music in your native language and stay away from podcasts unless they are in Chinese, of course. This is not easy to do and it goes back to what I said earlier about changing habits and getting rid of some things in order to free up more time for Chinese and that might not be something that everybody is willing to do even if they could. And finally, number seven, create solid listening habits. And this is something I mentioned before, and I also pointed you to the article about habit hacking, so check that out. So the goal in this episode is to dig a little bit deeper into have audio at a suitable level available. And what does this mean, and how can we achieve it in practice? So the first question we want to ask ourselves is, what is a suitable level for Chinese listening practice? When it comes to the difficulty of the Chinese you're listening to, many factors influence your choice. So, for example, your proficiency level, how much scaffolding you use, as we talked about in last week's episode, and how many times you're willing to listen. There are also emotional and psychological factors that matter. So, for example, how focused you are, how interested you are in listening to the Chinese you're listening to, how you feel at the moment, are you confident that you can deal with this, are you positive, do you have lots of energy, or do you feel a little bit dejected, tired after work, and maybe not all that keen on learning Chinese at all. All these things, and many more, influence what Chinese is suitable to listen to, and so when building your personal library, it is important to include a wide range so you have something for every occasion. Basically, at any point throughout the day, if you have the time and desire to listen to Chinese, you should have something that is suitable for that specific occasion, that isn't too hard, and that isn't too easy, and so on. Achieving this is not easy, unless you have already reached an advanced level and can listen to most things in Chinese and think it's relaxing. But as a beginner or intermediate student, your problem is rather the opposite, that everything is too hard, meaning that you need a lot of scaffolding or need to spend a lot of extra time to understand what you're listening to. If you are a beginner specifically, I suggest you check out episode 130, where we talked about beginner Chinese listening practice, what to listen to and how. If you want my recommendations for the best free Chinese listening resources, check out episode 115 or the article called The 10 Best Free Chinese Listening Resources for Beginner, Intermediate and Advanced Students. And as the title implies, this is not just for beginners then. So a key factor in determining if a listening resource is suitable or not is how much you can understand. And so here I want to talk a little bit about comprehensible input. Learning is about connecting language form to meaning, so the form can be written, say characters, words, and so on, or spoken, as in this case, so sounds, tones, prosody, and so on. Meaning is the intended message behind the written or spoken language. So in the context of listening, then, you learn something when you can connect something you hear with its intended meaning. Maybe someone says the name of your country in Chinese, and that leads your thoughts to your country. Great. Or perhaps you hear someone say 再见 to someone else, and you correctly interpret it as a farewell. Awesome! As your Chinese improves, you will be able to connect more and more of what people say with the underlying meaning, and this is what listening comprehension is about. When listening, the more such connections you can make between what you hear and the intended meaning, the better. These connections needn't even be new to be beneficial, so when you hear the same greeting the tenth time, you're still learning something. You're getting faster at parsing Chinese and connecting form to meaning. 
This improved processing also means that you need to focus less on what you hear, which frees up mental resources to deal with the more difficult things that you still can't do automatically. This is something we talked about in part 4 in the Beyond Timbodong series, about learning to process spoken Mandarin quickly and effortlessly. And that was episode 123. There might be a limit to how easy something can be, beyond which it makes little sense to engage with it from a language learning perspective, but this is usually far away from most Chinese learners. This means that most students should only add things to their personal Chinese audio library, there is little reason to remove listening resources, unless of course you think they are boring or you don't want to listen to them for some other reason. But don't get rid of listening resources just because they are not challenging enough. This is rarely the case and listening to old familiar audio is perfect for when you don't feel like tackling something more difficult. This brings us to the question of how much you should understand to get the most out of your listening practice, which is very hard to answer. The truth is that there simply isn't enough research into this area to be able to conclusively claim that a certain percentage is optimal, not even in very specific situations. And there are also many methodological issues, such as what it even means to understand 80% of something and how to measure that. For example, if you understand 80% of the words in a sentence, you might still understand zero of what the intended message was because you were lacking 20% and maybe all the key words were in those 20%. Or you might understand only 50% of a sentence, but because the context is clear, you might be able to figure out exactly what it means anyway. So it's very hard to measure these things, and as I said, there simply isn't enough research, especially not into listening. Still, I think it's safe to say that understanding more is generally speaking better. If you aren't able to make the form meaning connections that I discussed earlier, you're unlikely to learn much. So for example, putting on a TV show where you understand one word in every other sentence is not going to help much. Sure, you might learn some things about what spoken Mandarin sounds like, but you won't learn much beyond that. This doesn't mean that you need to understand everything, but as a minimum, you need to understand enough to find what you listen to engaging and interesting. If you don't reach that level of comprehension, you will quickly lose interest, because it's extremely hard to focus on spoken language where you only understand a few words here and there, especially for longer periods. Like I said before, it's hard to specify this in a number or percentage, but if you get the gist of the Chinese you're listening to, that's a decent minimum level of comprehension. Don't forget that listening more than once is also a great way of checking if something is too hard or not, because if you listen to it once and think it's hard, you maybe don't understand that much, maybe only the gist, like I said, but if you understand much more the second time you listen, you can just keep listening and you will probably figure out what most things mean. But if you listen a few times and it's still incomprehensible, you need to find something easier. However, even if getting the gist is the minimum level of comprehension, it shouldn't be the target you strive for for a majority of your listening time. For that, you need to understand much more than the gist, you should be able to understand most things without scaffolding and without listening many times and so on. It should be relatively easy, with only a few unfamiliar words or phrases sprinkled in here and there. If your goal is to expand your vocabulary and knowledge of grammar simply by listening, you need to understand almost everything. There is plenty of research into incidental learning, which is what this is called, and most of it is for reading, and there the number is usually close to 100%. The exact numbers don't really matter here, but the more you understand, the more likely you are to learn the new things that you didn't understand. It's worth to keep in mind here that the difficulty of listening is not only something inherent in the Chinese you're listening to, it's also related to what tools or what scaffolding you use, and this is something we spent the entirety of last week's episode on, so I'm not going to talk too much about it here, but let's go through the four methods that I mentioned in that episode very briefly. So the first one is to listen more than once, and I've already talked about that, so let's go on to number two, which is to lower the rate of speech, and this is preferably done by using software, which will give you more time to process what you hear and thereby make it easier. You can also use written support in the shape of a transcript, for example, or finally, you can visualize the spoken language, either by choosing resources that have some kind of images, maybe video, or by creating these in some way. For more about all these ways of scaffolding your listening, check out episode 180. So now that we have talked about all these things, let's return to what this episode was meant to be about, which is building a personal Chinese audio library. 
And just to briefly summarize what I said before, the idea is to have something suitable to listen to no matter what situation you're in. And this will then maximize the opportunities you have to listen, and you will thereby learn more. This means that if you list all the situations you find yourself in throughout a normal day, you should be able to find some kind of Chinese listening practice that works with that situation. And obviously this does not work if you have a meeting with your boss or if you hang out with your family, but for any situation where you could listen to Chinese, you should have something suitable available. And so this might be when you feel super energized and you really want to improve your listening ability and you check out a new podcast or something like that, but it could also be on your commute on your way home when you feel quite sleepy and don't have much energy. Then maybe you put on some Chinese music, you put on a familiar podcast you've listened to many times before, but you like the hosts and you find the content interesting. And maybe you don't focus on it that much, but you're still listening and you will pay attention to some things and that is always better than nothing. An important point here is that you don't only need to know about these resources that have the features that I have described, you also need to make sure that you can access them easily. The reason for this is that looking for resources, trying to download them, logging into an account, or searching for new podcasts or something, is in itself a time-consuming and energy-consuming activity, and if you're tired on the commute back home from work, you will not have the energy to go and look for all these things, so you need to have done it in advance. And similarly, if you're really motivated and want to listen to something difficult, that's not the ideal time to spend half an hour trying to find a suitable podcast. You could equally well have done that when you don't feel that energized and maybe didn't feel up to listening to something challenging. And so if you use your enthusiasm to do a menial task such as downloading podcast episodes, you're kind of wasting a learning opportunity. So let's continue with a more practical discussion about how to build your personal Chinese audio library, which is a long-term project and it's something you should start now, but will probably be something you continue doing for the rest of the time you study Chinese. It's about paying attention, of adding resources when you see them, and sometimes also going out of your way to find resources that suit you, that interest you, or fill gaps in your library. You probably already have some listening resources, and if you don't, or if you feel you don't have enough, I did mention two articles where I list lots of things you could do to improve your listening ability. I suggest that you use a simple system where you sort, store, or otherwise tag the listening material based on how hard it is for you. And I mean how hard it is for you now, not how hard it is objectively. So a tricky podcast episode in Chinese that you've studied carefully and listened to many times is not hard for you anymore, and it could in fact be even easier than another podcast episode which is objectively easier, maybe because there are fewer difficult words or because the grammar is easier. Next I'm going to propose a structure for your tags or folders or whatever you choose to use, and I actually don't envision most of you using this as I describe it here, because it is a little bit overkill and requires a little bit too much fiddling with files and resources and so on, but I think discussing the categories themselves is very useful, and you can use several of them, if nothing else then at least mentally to keep track of what resources you have. So the first category, Explore, is for potentially interesting listening resources you don't know where they fit yet, how hard they are, or exactly what you want to do with them. I normally just keep a list of this in a text file somewhere, so when somebody recommends something I add it to that list, and then later if I feel like listening to something new, I take something from that list and check it out. This is much easier than waiting for the moment where you want to listen to something and then try to go and look for recommendations, so collect these somewhere. The second category, challenge, is for listening resources that you can understand, but only with much effort. You might also need to listen many times to understand, or use other types of scaffolding, such as peeking at a transcript or lowering the rate of speech. And so this would be a category where you put audio material that you're working on currently, or intend to work on. The third category, comprehend, is for content you can make sense of largely unaided. This could, for example, be additional podcast episodes from a show you know well and you know is at the right level, or it could be the next chapter in the graded reader you're working on, or something similar. Anyway, something you think you can make sense of without too much aid. Category number four, Consolidate, is for material you have already studied or listened to and know well. Like I said before, don't throw listening material you have already covered away unless you really don't like it for some reason. Instead, put it somewhere, store it somewhere, or list it so that you can access it easily. 
This is perfect to re-listen to later. It's easier because you're familiar with the audio already. It's interesting because, well, you have chosen to listen to interesting things and it will help you review and so on. And in general, it doesn't require nearly as much effort as it does to listen to something new. Finally, the fifth category, enjoy, is for listening resources that you truly enjoy, regardless of difficulty. This category is meant to be reserved for things you want to listen to just because you enjoy them, not because you want to learn Chinese or for some other extra reason. You should just simply enjoy listening to them. It could maybe be songs you like or some other type of audio that you thoroughly enjoy. This category is very useful to have when you don't really feel like studying, but still want to engage with Chinese somehow. So I think it's overkill for most people to actually have tags or folders that mimic the five categories that I just discussed, but I still think it's interesting to talk about audio in this way. You can also use different types of tools for different categories, so it needn't be that you save everything as mp3 files and then sort them like I said, but you could have a simple text file for the first category, explore, like I said I did, or you could create a playlist with your favorite Chinese music so it's easily accessible, or you can find and subscribe to numerous podcasts that you know are roughly on the right level. You can then also save the episodes that you have listened and go back and listen to those when you want something less challenging. Naturally, I think you should do all these things or find some other way of keeping track of and making sure that these audio resources are available whenever you want them. And like I said before, it's important to make them easily accessible, not just accessible. As I also said, building your personal Chinese library is a long-term project, and by exploring and by listening more, you will gradually build out these categories. As you listen more, you will find that most things will end up in the comprehend or consolidate category, which is great, and it's also in line with the idea that most of your listening practice should be comprehensible and meaning-focused, and that requires you to have audio at a suitable level. By building a personal Chinese audio library, you ensure that you always have something suitable to listen to, which will enable you to listen more and thereby also learn more. Thank you for tuning in to the Hacking Chinese podcast. If you like this episode, please share it. More information and inspiration about learning and teaching Chinese can be found at hackingchinese.com. See you in the next episode, and until then, good luck with your studies.